Hello everyone, welcome to Court with Chrissy. To avoid her fifth, maybe sixth DUI, today's defendant is hoping to have evidence suppressed, but the evidence almost wants to suppress itself. It's long, but I promise it's entertaining. I hope you like it. Court with Chrissy is now in session. Not well, she's in custody somewhere, I'm just not sure where. She is? Yeah. Why? She's been in custody for months. The OER? Oh, there, there she is. is. No, it's not an OAR. It's an OWI five or six or something with the corresponding OAR. And I think felony bail or something or? Judge, um, if I need to, I, I have video. Um, yes. Do I just connect with yeah, these? Yeah, you connect or? it in there and you just let me know and I have to hit the, okay. the things. We will go on the record in the matters 22 CF 254, 22 CT 45, 24 CF 101, 24 TR 435 and 436, State of Wisconsin versus Stephanie Current. The state appears through Assistant District Attorney Kevin Schmidt in person. We have uh, Michelle Erdman in person, Defense Counsel. Ms. Current appears by video conferencing in custody in Polk County Jail. Ms. Current, you are currently appearing um, by video conferencing for this suppression hearing motion. Your attorney is here in person. Um, this is what the court would describe as a critical stage hearing. You would have the right to be here in person with your attorney and we can schedule it for another date and time if you wish to be in person or we can proceed here today uh, with you appearing by video conferencing. How would you like to proceed? I asked earlier to be there in person, but I guess they didn't they didn't do anything about that. So since I'm here now, I just want to hurry to go on. But I can let you know you do have the right to be here in person. So the court can reschedule this at its next earliest date that works for all parties so that you can be here in person with your attorney right next to her. Um, do you still wish to proceed by video? I've been here almost seven months. I don't wish to go on any for another court date because it takes so long. I'd like to go on. I have faith in my attorney. All right. So you wish to waive your right to an, an in-person appearance um, and proceed by video. If at any time you cannot hear or see Ms. Erdman or anything that's going on in the court, let me know and I will make sure that you've heard and seen everything, okay? Okay. And if at any time you have any questions or concerns and you need to speak with your attorney, let me know. I'll send her to our Zoom room and I'll put you into a confidential breakout session. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're here on the suppression uh, here, motion hearing. Uh, the court has uh, reviewed the suppression motion. Um, Mr. Schmidt, are you ready to begin? Yes. Call your first witness. I call Trevor Tex. Chief Tex, please come forward, raise your right hand, be sworn in, and have a seat at the witness stand. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to provide the court will be truthful, or truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. You may begin. Could you state your name for the record? What do you do for a living? Police officer. Are you employed right now? Yes. How are you employed oh, right now? I'm the police chief for the Village of Siren. Um, how long have you been employed by the Village of Siren? Total time, it's like 11 years, I think. You've been employed as a police officer in Siren since, uh, on June 21st, 2022? Correct. Okay. And how many total years law enforcement experience do you have? 23. And did you ever get any training or experience? Um, let's just stick to training for now. Any training as it relates to uh, traffic enforcement, OWI, field sobriety? Yes. Could you describe briefly what that training was? Yep. So, traffic enforcement, I got some training at the Recruit Academy at CBTC in Eau Claire back in 2000. I went through standardized field sobriety testing. Um, that was in like 2003, I believe. I then went through drugs that impaired driving, and I believe it was 2004. Um, and then on the job training. When you say drugs and impaired driving, is that A-Ride or something else? It's, I believe, what A-Ride turned into now. This was prior to A-Ride. If you're not A-Ride certified, it's a different type of drug detection training. Correct. Okay. Um, and for those trains you went to, were they graded in any way? Did you have to pass anything? We had to do the standardized field sobriety test, I believe, with the 
um, standardized field sobriety testing class, we had to pass a test. And you passed that? Correct. And have you continued to do traffic and OWI investigations in this 21 year career? Yes. Do you have any estimate how many OWI arrests you've done? Hundreds. Hundreds. Okay. So I want to direct your attention to June 21st, 2022, around 530. Were you dispatched to a two vehicle incident? Yes. Um, do you recall what the call was actually about? It was a two vehicle car crash, stayed at 35 near the Clear Lake boat landing. Okay. Um, did you go out to that? Yes. What did you see when you got out there? There was one car still on the roadway and another vehicle was off into the ditch, the southbound side ditch um, with rear end damage. The car that was still in the road had front end damage. So what did you do at seeing that? Began to talk to Chief Cybers, who was already on scene prior to my arrival. Um, <clears throat> made sure the occupants in the, I'll call it unit two, the vehicle that was still in the roadway, uh, make sure they were okay and then spoke with occupants in unit one. So the vehicle still in the roadway, who were the occupants of that? Austin Donahue. Okay, he was the sole occupant? Correct. And unit one that was not in the roadway, who was that? Uh, it was reported to be driving by Stephanie Current and she had her young grandchild in the vehicle with her. When you say young grandchild, how young are we talking? Like two to three years old. Like an infant? Uh, toddler. toddler. Okay. She identified the child as her grandchild? Yes. Uh, so you actually talked and encountered Stephanie Current. Correct. The Stephanie Current you encountered and talked to, you see her either in court or on any of the video software. Yes, I do. You say where she is and what she's wearing. She's on the video software center of the screen with an orange top and orange pop bottoms and a white shirt underneath. Let the record reflect that Chief Tex has identified Ms. Current. So coming to the scene of this crash, what was, what was your goal? What were your duties investigating the crash? Figure out what happened, make sure everybody was not injured, and to get the roadway cleared up. How'd you go about doing that? Uh, <clears throat> I believe Chief Cybers, I believe, took photographs. Um, I took to, talked to Austin Donahue, got his statement of what he had observed. I then spoke with Ms. Current. I guess we'll start with Mr. Donahue then. What did he say happened? He had said that he was following the vehicle and the vehicle was <clears throat> weaving within its own lane. I believe he even said he it crossed the center line, but I'm not 100% sure on that, but off of my memory. Um, did you describe anything else about the driving? Anything about vehicle speed? I think you would slow down and speed up. That's been sure hearing. I believe we've got the right to have no hearsay, right? No hearsay is, is admissible. Hearsay is admissible. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Um, I believe he did say that it would slow down, speed up in the, in the time frame he was behind it as well. Did he describe how the crash occurred? He just said he was following her, didn't see a blinker, and she just slammed on the brakes to turn, and he rear-ended her. Okay. Um, prior, when you encountered Stephanie Current, uh, did the fact that she was there have any significance to you? Did you hear anything about her over the radio? I did. What did you hear? Prior to the crash, maybe 15 to 20 minutes, there's a call of an erratic driver, um, southbound State Road 35, and that vehicle was stopped by what, the Webster Police Chief Stephanie Wadeen. Okay, and was uh, Miss Current the driver of that vehicle? Yes. Did you talk with Miss Current about that stop by Stephanie Wadeen? I don't believe I did. You don't recall if you did? I don't recall if I did. Okay. All right. So, uh, what did you do then after uh, discovering all that? Just began speaking with Ms. Current. Um, in speaking with her, her reactions were slowed. I asked her if she had taken any prescription meds. Um, <clears throat> she said that she does not take any prescription meds. Then said that she had back surgery in February and ha had been prescribed medication, but hasn't been taking them and hadn't taken them for two months. Um, <clears throat> her speech was slowed. She did have an intoxilizer in the car, which I had to visually observe her blow into because it was um, telling her it was time to blow into the intoxilizer. And then I had, I had her close her eyes so I could check to see how her pupils were reactive to light. And her pupils did not change from the minute I, she closed her eyes, opened them, the pupils didn't react to light like a normal person or that a person that wouldn't be under the influence of something. Uh, that test, where did you learn that test? It, when, you, when I went through the drugs and impaired driving class, they gave us a little it's like a little laminated sheet of paper had the pupil size on it to where if you still had the card, you could hold it up next to their face to see where their pupil finished at when it was reactive to light. And it would just kind of gauge off of that. But 
with the pupil not constricting, it's usually a telltale sign that somebody's using some type of substance, prescription med, illegal illegal drugs. So some meds affect the how the pupils react to light. Correct. Um, so for clarification, then, what is a normal reaction to this test? So a normal reaction would be if I had you close your eyes, had you open them, to, your eyes are going to react to light and constrict, so it does not allow too much light into your eyeball because um, it can damage your eye that way. And sometimes people under the influence of controlled substances, how do their eyes sometimes react? They'll either stay dilated, constrict, super pinpoint. Um, they'll either just stay where they're at or they'll get real pinpoint. How did Stephanie Current's uh, pupils react? They stayed where they were, did not react at all. Okay. Uh, did you do any tests after that? Yes. What test did you do? I did the horizontal gaze and nystagmus test, which is a check of her eyes. Um, could you briefly describe what that is? Yep. So it's a it's a check of like like I said, Stephanie's eyes. Um, I held my index finger out in front of her face, approximately twelve inches. Asked Stephanie if she could see the tip of my finger, which she replied that she could. Um, <clears throat> I then informed Stephanie when I moved my finger from side to side, followed the tip of my finger with her eyes only, and not to move her head. Asked Stephanie if she understood. She, I believe, said she did. Um, and then I just began the test. So where did you learn how to do this test? That's taught by the, it was taught to me by True Sergeant Rich Reichenberger and Pat Cracky from the Wisconsin State Patrol. When and where? Oh, it was back in, I believe it was 2003, and the class was held at the St. Croix Tribal Fire Department. Was this part of the field sobriety training test that you said you, you passed the test? Yes. So it's one of the standardized field trial tests? Correct. Okay. Um, does this test only work on alcohol? This test, no, it does. It does some drugs you can see nystagmus with. Some Depressed. drugs cause nystagmus the same way that alcohol does. Correct. Okay. So, how did Stephanie do on this test? I observed six clues out of six clues. When you say clues, what did you actually see? So, the first set of clues you're looking for is the lack of smooth pursuit in a normal person. As they track your finger from side to side, they're gonna their eyeballs aren't gonna stop. They're just gonna slowly follow your finger. The nice the lack of smooth pursuit says. As she's tracking my finger with her eyes, the eyes twitch. So you're looking for basically an eye twitch. Uh, the second set is nystagmus at maximum deviation. I did observe in both her red, right and left eye, nystagmus at maximum deviation. How, we, how I was trained is you go off their shoulder and go just outside the person's shoulder is their maximum deviation. Sorry, it's my uh, TBO, DVD oh. recorder okay. thing and I apologize for okay. the interruption. Sorry. Continue. So it goes just outside the person's shoulder um, is the maximum deviation. It's like a 45 degree onset. And you just hold the finger there for approximately two seconds. Um, you're watching that eye to see if that eye will get to the corner and bounce back and go back to the corner. So, so again, it's nystagmus, which is jerkiness, involuntary jerkiness of the eye. The last set of clues that I was looking for was nystagmus prior to the onset. So if you, the other time was outside the shoulders, this time it's inside the shoulders. So as you move your finger, as you're inside the shoulder, if you get the involuntary jerkiness of the subject's eyes when you, before you stop to go the other direction. Okay. So basically what you're, you're moving your finger and at certain points, if the eye is jerky and not smooth, that's an indication of, of intoxication. Correct. Okay. And it works for alcohol, but it also works for some drugs, but not others. Correct. All right. What were the, you said there were six of so you saw all the jerkiness. Correct. Okay. Uh, did you do any other tests after that? I did not have her do the walk and turn test or the one leg stand test just out of fear that she had recent back surgery and I didn't want her to fall down and get hurt or tweak her back any more than what she possibly could have. I did ask her to perform two other tests. Um, one was count backwards from 59 to 41 and the other one was the alphabet test. Uh, describe what happened with the 59 to 41 test. So I had asked Ms. Current if she, how many, if she had school um, and she said yes and she said that she had five years of college. So I asked her again, I just confirmed with her, if I asked you to count backwards from 59 to 41, do you think you could do that? And she said, yes. So I had her begin. During that test, she skipped the number 44. After she had finished, I had asked her if she knew she skipped number 44 and she said no and laughed. Is that a normal response to that test? No. Uh, how'd she do on the alphabet test? I did not see or hear any clues on the alphabet test. I had her start at A, stop at N. So she passed that one? Correct. Okay. Uh, what did you do next? I informed Stephanie that she was going to be under arrest and going to be taking her for a blood draw at Burnett Medical Center. Uh, did she say anything uh, on the scene about 
that. Yes. What she, she said. She said that she can't be under arrest because it's against her religion, or she couldn't go for the blood draw because it was against her religion. And did she subsequently change her mind and agree to the blood test? Yes. And this is prior to the informing the accused. Correct. Uh, while you, when did you actually read her the informing the accused? Once I got to the Burnett Medical Center. Did she make any statements against interest, uh, any relevant statements, I should say, prior to getting to the hospital and reinforming Honor, the accused? This is outside the scope of the motion. Why? Why is it outside of the scope? We're here for the suppression hearing to determine whether or not there is reasonable suspicion to place her under arrest. Probable cause to place her under arrest. At that point, she was being transported and she was under arrest. <laughs> oh, I didn't see in the motion that they're placing the Fourth Amendment violation at that. If that's what they're saying now, then sure. I just saw that it said the HGN was done wrong, so all evidence should be suppressed. Um, are you limiting it to the arrest, or is is the motion something further? The um, blood draw, et cetera, I'm not challenging. I do believe that they gave the, the um, adequate um, notice to the accused, or informing the accused. No challenge to blood draw. That's why I make sure they're saying the violation was the arrest because of lack of probable cause, correct? The Correct. So there was okay. no probable cause to arrest her. And then anything that happened once she got into the squad car, when she was officially um, detained forward, right. I'm not challenging today. All right. So that's beyond the scope. And she's the lim scope is limited to the arrest and that uh, the allegation of no probable cause to arrest. Okay. Oh, finally, uh, what were the, the conditions uh, during this and the tests? Sunny, um, daylight. No rain or precipitation? Nope, it was sunny, uh, hot, you, I do believe. Did you do a crash report of the actual crash? Yes. And you created a document that has a picture of uh, the scene? Yes. So this was this crash didn't happen at an intersection? No. Could you briefly describe the scene? Yep, so on stereo 35 in the area of the crash, as you come around um, south of Clear Lake Street, approximately 500 feet or so, um, as you come around, just as you start around the corner, you got a trailer park on your left, the Clear Lake Bowl Landing is on your right, and that would have like a small horseshoe to turn in and park, and that's where the crash had happened at the northernmost um, turn into that. It's not only a pedestrian crossing. Uh, miss, also... miss, 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 miss Current, I didn't hear that, and I don't want to hear that. I uh, spoke over you for that reason. Um, if you wish to speak with your attorney, you can do so. She will have the ability to start questioning, but right now it is the state's ability to question. And so now I did miss all of what the question and answer was. Can you repeat? Yes. So <clears throat> the area of the crash, as you go south on State Road 35 from the traffic lights, um, you, you get to the area of the Clear Lake Bowl Landing, Clear Lake Beach. You have the trailer park on your left. The right, as you're going south, the right-hand side is a horse, a smaller horseshoe style entrance exit for the Clear Lake Beach, and it would have, the accident would have occurred at the northernmost entrance to the Clear Lake Beach. And you drew a picture as part of your crash report? Yes. Did you recognize it? You saw it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Recognize the document I showed you? I do. And what is it? It is the, I believe, the first sheet of the accident report, which has a picture on it. Picture fairly and accurately represents the road and where the vehicles collided. Correct. Okay. I uh, asked you to admit this in evidence and move it in as such. Ms. Erdman, no objection. Received. Uh, nothing further from me. All right. Questions, Ms. Erdman. Thank you. Um, Deputy Tex, when you were um, first arriving on scene, you located Ms. Current? Correct. Did she indicate to you why they were turning into the beach? I believe it was to go swimming. Okay. The accident that involved Mr. Don Donahoe? Donahue. Donahue. Um, Mr. Donahue had a revoked driver's license? Correct. He was driving someone else's vehicle because he had just struck something within a matter of a couple months prior? I don't know. I believe it was a deer? I don't know. If I indicated that, um, okay, we'll leave it at that. Um, you were aware that Miss um, Current, do, do you recall how old she said she was? 
not off the top of my head, no. Okay. Um, were you familiar with whether or not she had any uh, back injuries prior? Just from her saying that she had back surgery in February. Okay. Did she appear to have some difficulty in um, standing, et cetera, which is why you uh, for, for or decided to forego the um, second portion of your standardized field test? I'd foregone them because I didn't want her to fall or get hurt, correct? Okay. And in terms of the stop that, is it Deputy Ladine? Stephanie Wadeen, the Webster Police Chief. Wadeen? Yes. Okay. And um, Stephanie Wadeen, Chief Wadeen, when she made the stop, um, she did not issue a citation? Not that I'm aware of. Did she express um, that she had completed standardized field uh, sobriety testing? I have no idea. Okay. It, you were unaware that she had any, any kind of testing for or any kind of um, concerns about impairment? Correct. So then the... First um, time that you saw Ms. Current, you indicated that you used um, your, your, your flashlight to check her pupils. Correct. You also indicated in your testimony it was sunny. Yep. Did you attempt in any way to bring her into some shade or, or shield her eyes when you administered that test? No, because usually when you, when you close your eyes, your eyes react to the darkness. So when you open, they should. But you had straight. a pen, pen light out. I don't have a pen light. Or I'm sorry, a flashlight? Could have, yes. And so essentially in your training, that light is intended to make the, the eyes or the pupils dilate. Correct. And you're, you were not trained to do this in some kind of a darker or um, uh, darker environment? We were trained to do this at roadside. Okay. So whether it's daytime, nighttime, it's roadside. Okay. And so at the time that you committed or concluded this test, were you wearing your uh, police issued body camera? Probably. I would have been, I'm guessing. Or, or did you have it activated, I should say? I would believe so. Okay. If I told you that I had received a copy of that from the, the state and that I, I have that in my player, would, would you have any reason to doubt that? No. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I move then to publish um, the body camera. It's the footage from uh, Officer like Text. Play the whole thing? No, I would not like to play the whole thing. You just like need to receive it and review it later? I was going to play some now. Okay. <laughs> I need to probably... Are you able to see my screen or how, I guess I haven't played video here before. Yeah, I'm gonna get your screen up here in one minute. And we'll wanna double check that Stephanie can see it because in the past, the reason I haven't done this when there's Zoom is I haven't been able to get it go over Zoom. Okay. Well, I guess we don't technically need to play it here, but I guess we do. We'll do that. Are you hooked up? I'm, I've got it plugged in. Not appearing to be plugged in. Uh, we'll see what it is first. Are you, let's see. Um, Your Honor, it's plugged in. I don't know why it wouldn't be operational. I don't know either. and asked to share the screen in Zoom. I've got to dial into Zoom. What? Oh, well, so she can see it. Oh. She can't see it unless you're in Zoom. Okay. Well, let's see here. And so you're going to have to not have audio. I need audio. That's the whole purpose of this. So... Everything's on here.
I just hit another way. Are you still plugged in? Because I hit another way and it's still not doing anything. It's black. Okay. I'm just going to try to zoom into your, your room here. The system's working. It's something with whatever's going on with your system and probably compatibility. I just tried it the both both of the ways and it's okay. not working. Could you admit me and maybe I can put it through Zoom? <sighs> Does joining joining? Yeah, I'm not sure why it's not internet access. It said you're sharing your screen, but it's black. There we go. I can see it. Can you see it? Um, this current can see it. You're going to have to mute yourself, or I can mute you. I can see it. All right. But uh, here, let me mute. But again, I can't share it. Well, let me try this. Maybe if I shut that off now and go there. Yeah. A disk drive? It says you're sharing there. But again, I can't get it on here, even though it's. It's on that. Phone. Oh, was it? OK. Now it disappeared. Well, let me see again. Now it went away again. Yeah, I stopped it because I needed to try to get it to relaunch. Should come back up here. It'll come up black and then it'll share. Well, I see it on Zoom, but I don't see it now. There it is on that one. So, officer, I'm going to have you go sit over there by the um, on the uh, guardian and litem table. All right, we should be good to go. Officer, can you see the video? Yes. Ms. Current, can you see the video? Yes. Ms. Erdman, can you please turn down the audio? It will come through in my court without your audio. Okay. All right. Um, I am not going to have it be transcribed. Um, we can submit the uh, video as evidence. You may begin. Wait, not getting the sound. 
also having trouble reading off of that disk. It's not, it's not playing on here. It's very delayed. Yeah. For some reason, you're, I don't know what's going on with your computer, but it should be playing through my system, not your computer. Let me try this. Can you unmute my, or I'm going to unmute. Yeah. Um, I'm going to guess that you maybe you need to step outside and appear by Zoom too. I don't know why it's not connecting to my system like everyone else is. Okay. I don't have a clue why it's not connecting to the audio. Something's muted. Presentation volumes up. Now we're off. I only see it on Zoom. Why don't you unmute it so we can see if we can hear it, then you can go by the other room. I don't know, does the state have the ability to play? The, I mean, have they tried and true method to play the disk? It's just the... I don't have a disk drive. So what I would have to do is I'd have to rip it off of our shared drive onto a flash drive to play it. Really, that's what, I've never had anyone hook up with a DVD, quite honestly. They always always bring up a little flash drive. This is what I received from the state. And unfortunately, I just don't have, I mean, it's what I got. I don't have a way to burn anything. If that's ever a problem in the future, you can always request the digital file or other well, formats. It's worked fine until this point. I didn't realize that we were going to have this kind of problem, so I would have for sure asked. I, I... <clears throat> All right, Judge. Well, I don't know if we can maybe reconvene when we can play the disc, or if you want to just have it on your video and I explain to you. I don't know how to move forward. If you submit the video, you'd want to give her a certain portion to listen to because it's over two hours and most of it's irrelevant. Do you have the ability, Mr. Schmidt, to go zip it up in a short amount of time? I don't know how long it would take. I can be an estimate right now. So there's two videos. One is 9.42 a.m. One is 10.47 a.m. Those are the two we would need. Not gonna lie, that this thing is very annoying, very loud. Oh, I don't know if it's the microphone right there. Oh, it was touching. Oh, that's what it was. I'm like that was very loud.
You want to try it on the DA table, maybe? Maybe the defense table is not working properly. I can sure try. It'll probably take me about 15 to 30 minutes to be able to put it on my computer. This is the download feature. Yeah. You want me to try to help you? If you have technical abilities. You have to use this bank for it because that's not helping. What? You have to use this bank for it because that's slowing down the right speed. I do because I don't have like auto. I mean, that's the only. Or what do you have? Do you know how to USB connect on this? No. Oh my god. I was wondering if maybe it's that. Yeah, that's maybe. Should I grab a laptop? Hold on. Uh, you can. Yeah, grab this. a laptop. This is yeah, because quite honestly, we have never ever ever had anyone bring a little disk thingy in. Unfortunately, it is. Yeah. Jackie's gonna grab the laptop. That would be awesome. And then we'll see. I see right the in. problem was her. It wasn't connected. But it was That's also it was old. Okay, now we're actually connected. This is kind of laggy. Well, I have it set up, so you guys should pop up. Now you should be able to switch to screen share to her computer, not through uh, Zoom, just through general. I, I am. I'm on your prosecution right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll power up. I think up. this setup is doing it. It could, it could be. I've used it in other courts, but I mean, every one of them, every place you go is different, unfortunately. Yep, they should mandate that we have all the same, right? I mean, this must be like 15. Should all be old. the same system. I, I get this from DA's office, so I got to be able to open them. I don't know. <laughs> we can try the, try the court's laptop or right. the clerk's laptop. Clerk's laptop. Sure, I didn't really realize. I wasn't sure what was still going on, honestly. Off the record. Well, then all of that we can hear and the uh, difficulty and what we're trying to do to make sure this gets done today. Oh, does the court computer have a disk reader? I think so. Nice. Oh, it doesn't have a disk reader? Oh. I just thought maybe maybe a different computer. Yeah. Um, if you've got yeah, if you've got this, maybe we can try this. Thank you. Good idea. Can you see this? Which one of these goes into your computer? Yeah. Well, if it wasn't connected, that might be half of that. Another lightning. All right. Okay. So, Judge, can you see the screen on this? I don't know. Not yet. Not so much, huh? I'll turn it all off and I'll go yeah, back. Yeah, thank you, Emma. See that. Okay. Let's see now. HDMI. Hey, Jen, people have to get their licenses a lot quicker because this candy is really stale. What's stale? The candy. The I license have to candy. For getting their license. <laughs> the license stale. candy is stale. Oh, I'm sure it's very old. Can you also the other laptop has a disk? Is this working or should we try it? It's not. I have it on and I don't know why it's not working. I don't think it's the disc at this. I mean, we've got to be able to see the screen regardless, right? I tried the other way now, and I, I'm not seeing it's black. It's a black screen. It sent the content, and now I'm looking at a black screen on my computer, too. I don't know if that's, I don't know that that's going to solve the problem. And turn out. Well, I don't know. It seems like this is not projecting for some reason. I'm gonna just see if she can see the anything. It doesn't even need to be on the desk. Anymore. Oh, I gotta turn that. Yeah. Okay. Anyone want any uh, very stale whoppers or a Kit Kat? 
you have any stale peanut butter cups? No, I've probably eaten those. <laughs> I need before, a stale. The poor people that get their license. I'm like, oh, I finally got my license. Oh, I get a treat. <laughs> oh, I guess I got to get rid of that. Oh. And get stuff. Kind of candy that lasts long. It's been, probably been there a year. Maybe like a hard candy? Often. Hard candy. Well, good. no, because, okay, it was plugged in and Zoom was projecting. So this is working. Some, yeah, that's working. It's just we weren't getting the sound and I don't know. No, I know. I'm just, I was trying to figure out like where the disconnect was, but now this won't project on this. Now 70% downloading, with, done downloading the files. So now Backup defense. plan. On, on, it should be, should be coming on. I'm gonna try and plug this one on. Yeah. Maybe just see if the screen will show up even. With, even without the disc, we can just try that out. Let me shut it all off and then go right back and uh, see. Is it, is it because your is it because your Zoom is on um, that it's preventing uh, it? No, we do this all the time, <laughs> so I don't know what's going on today. Let me go to the other way. Sending content. I don't know where it's going. <laughs> I'm seeing. Are you seeing rainbows? Very blank. Nope, a oh. blank screen. Hi, Mr. Smith Schmidt again. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe we need CCAP in here to fix that. Eighty-five percent don't know. <laughs> then I can just try to do it myself. Out of disk. Have an HDMI This is a huge laptop. Yeah. Okay. Hey. And I'm seeing it right now. Yeah. Is the disc in here? Oh, the disc is over here. But, but slowly hand But now let me try something else because it shouldn't be on that one. It shouldn't be on that one. It should be on a totally different one. There, I'm seeing it now on how I'm supposed to see it. Okay. So they've alleged that this has it all on it. My well, just play it. Are you cool if it's on you? I'm cool with this? however you play it. I just whatever you got. I'm guessing, I'm guessing so too. So it's the one that says 9:42 a.m. There's I think a lot of them. Can I leave this to you? Yeah, of course. Like sit right next to me. Um, I don't want to move this over there. No, oh, I don't. Back, I'll just switch seats. Is that cool? Whatever you want. I don't know. We should probably test it. The cord there, but I don't know if it's the disky thing or what. But let's try. We, the took the, we took the disky thing out. It shouldn't be. No, I know, but I'm saying for us to know in the future. Sure. Um, and did somebody play something? We need to hear some. Make sure that's still. I haven't tried work. playing it yet. All right. It should play with media player. Yeah, that's what I use. That works fine. There's cross. Yay! All right. Back on the record, same appearances as previously oh. noted. The court has, uh, and well, actually, all oh, parties, um, except the court and the officer, have uh, figured it out and got the uh, equipment to work. We are now at the uh, playing the video stage. Um, it does work, and we have sound, we have video. Miss Current, can you see the video? No. But Miss Current cannot see the video. So that's we, what I've never been able to. That's what we need. Now. That's why we need you to be on Zoom. Can we log into Zoom with that computer too? I don't think so. I think the problem is when you're sharing screens to two separate interfaces. And that's what. Oh, that's doing. what could cause another problem. Well, can we? Where does? What is she looking at? You? Can we show her your screen while it's playing? No. Right now it's showing that screen. I the can't. The camera in the courtroom can't. I and onto something that's no, oh, I, I don't, I don't think so. It's it's let me see. Or that one, I don't, I don't know which direction it's coming from. Me. You might want to make it a full screen though. 
Well, I'm going the wrong way. No, she's by the door. That's good. Yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Optical illusion. <laughs> I, I'm reversed. I'm mirrored. So everybody thinks I'm swearing people in with my left hand. I really, truly know my left and my right. There. Hard to zoom in. Now, which? Okay, so. Whoa. Wow, is a. Oh. <laughs> no. Yep. I guess. Oh man. Now that's an optical illusion. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's gonna work, guys. I don't think that's gonna work. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, because it's showing itself, it's infinitely going in like one of those old paintings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure, but she can't see it now. So <sighs> I guess all this was fun for not. Okay. Well, so we're going to need to uh, reschedule this because we can't figure out how to have by Zoom the people watching in in person video because I can't think of anything else other than someone else being on Zoom. I've attempted to video. do this twice without a county judges and never been able to figure it out. That's why I didn't think it would work at all. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we figured out the, the video part of it, but then the sound was the. All right. So our options for rescheduling so that she can be here in person with you so she can physically see the video. July 30th, one, yes, one, that is on the record, 145. I'm in a trial, got trialed every day that week. Every day that week. Actually, hold on now. Wait, well, I have to see the video. I've already seen it. Do you you have a right to be able to view the video and view the video while your attorney is questioning the officer? You do also have the right to waive that and say, you know what, judge, I trust I've seen the video and my attorney in watching and questioning. And I'm going to leave that in your hands, Ms. Current, because you are the one who is in custody and have been waiting to have this hearing and that. Uh, if we do adjourn by looking at this calendar, if we cannot get it in by July 29th week, in which your attorney does have uh, trials pretty much all week, I think she said, we wouldn't be here getting in until sometime in August. What is it you would like to do? I would like to waive my right. I trust my attorney. I did see the uh, video already. I have a copy. All right. Just get home. All right. So she has seen the video. She's waiving the right to uh, view the video during questioning of the officer as it relates to the video. Therefore, we will go back to the video and uh, we will proceed with questioning. All right, so I, I think essentially tried to lay the foundation that this is his body cam. This is- um, I stipulate the body cam. I don't object to its admissibility. Pretty All close right. to the beginning of, I think, his encounter with her. So this is where I'll start at zero, zero. Stephanie, yes. do you take medications? No. None? No, uh, Tylenol. And I'm not the check safe for my uh, rheumatoid arthritis. I take injections once a week. Okay. Um, Are you diabetic or anything? No, I'm not diabetic. I'm completely healthy except for my spine. Okay. Um, I'm trying to get my card up so I can you can see. Maybe you just close your eyes for me. Look up. Now open them. Close them. Now open them. Okay, so prior to the um, start of the video, you had testified that you uh, were able to conduct a test on her eyes in order to determine whether or not the pupils were reactive. Right. And, I'm going to have you come right back up here since we don't need you there. And then at least Ms. Current has the ability to see you better. So I need to move this so that we can do this and get back to the presentation. Can you estimate approximately how long her eyes were, were closed for this test? Briefly, maybe half a second to a second. Okay, so your testimony today is that you were trained to do this roadside. It does not in involve determining whether or not it's daylight or nighttime. 
the use of the flashlight is voluntary. Is that all accurate so far? Correct. Okay. And so the, the way that you were trained this to do this, you can have someone close their eyes for as small of a fraction as a half a second and have them be re, uh, react or, or constrict. And then when they reopen the eyes in the daylight, you should see a reaction. Correct. And, and that's your testimony? Well, the pupils would not constrict in the dark, but they would get bigger. Okay. Pupils would get bigger in the dark. They should constrict when they open to the light. Okay. So your testimony was about a half a second? Yes. Stephanie, yes. do you take medications? No. None? No. Uh, Tylenol and methotrexate for my uh, rheumatoid arthritis. I take injections once a week. Okay. Um, Are you uh, diabetic or anything? No. I'm not diabetic. I'm completely healthy except for my spine. Um, I'm trying to get my card up so I can, you can see. Maybe you just close your eyes for me, look up. Now open them. Close them. Now open them. There's a dock block. Yes. So, uh, just to let you know, I did talk to Kenny yesterday. Kenny here. Okay. He's agreed to give us the program. Sweet. Okay, I just stopped it at 106. Um, I believe she's over speaking with one of your colleagues at that point. I'm going to restart at 217. Well, he's easier to handle. That's why I'm asking you to handle. I'll go to father and Are you just a Chris? You just want me to cut him a ticket? You want me to just cut him a ticket? Somebody grab some. Yeah, pictures. Okay. Oh, there's video. Briefly. Not about the accident. At home. He was working for Hopkins and I was way on the list of Paul's phone. I think so. <laughs> Bethany. So what what all are you? Okay, so at some point did you observe or, or report or document that um Miss Current was unsteady on her feet? Do you recall stating that? I believe I did. Okay. And then that was one of the things that you were attributing to, to the basis for um, uh, impairment? No. Not unsteadiness? No. Okay. What are your medical problems? I just have... Um, what you said with your back? They rebuilt my spine with titanium because I had uh, degenerative disc disease. Okay. And I had four, four or five surgeries and it's finally fixed and slipped back and slipped up to the bottom. Okay. Do you do any illegal drugs or narcotics? Absolutely not. I'm not? 60 years old. I think I can stop it. Don't kick it out. My sister had to just drop that and I'm not doing it. It's slow girl. It's only me and my daughter. I'm just trying to figure out why we have the initial call on you earlier. Right, we stopped. Yeah. Well, during me and baby, we walked around this chicken farm. We came back. We talked a little bit and I said, I'm okay. I said, we're both fine. And she said, okay. He said, you want me to follow? I said, if you want. You know, that's fine, but she's going to the beach for a little bit you know, before she goes to bed. And I said, okay, and then he came here and just sort of went in his head. Oh. Did you attribute some of the basis for your um, suspicion that she may be under the influence to her having slurred speech? Yes. Do you, did you at any point ask her if she wears dentures? Do you recall? I don't believe I did. Okay. Rapidly behind us. Okay. So at this point, it looks as though um, the, the paramedics or the fire department are kind of doing their work. Yeah, with the grandchild. And they're, they're helping with the grandchild. Um, Stephanie has indicated that she takes medications, but has not taken them recently, and then indicated that she has a back injury. Correct. Okay. You said that you do attribute 
her speech or slurred speech as something that you used as the basis, but you did not feel as though she was um, having any difficulty on her feet or in unsteadiness. Correct. Okay. So the next thing that um, I think we would progress to then is I'm going to move this to 1310 if I can. Let's see. See if I can get this to. So when was he eligible? Is it fair to say after you initially spoke with Stephanie that you or I've moved to see it a little better? The screen. Oh, yeah, you can. Um, I haven't shown anything that uh, you sure. Um, at, at some point, though, you had either yourself or your um, one of your your patrolmen conduct a search of Stephanie's vehicle. Yes. And that was to determine whether or not there was anything illegal in the car. I would believe so, yes. Did you locate anything in a, a in a thorough search of the vehicle? No. Not to my knowledge or re recollection. Okay. Why did we lose the there it is? Because I have to switch so she can see. See him. Oops. Got it. So to this point, you've made initial contact with Stephanie and then the search has been conducted. Is that fair to say? Yes. And you you have not yet had a chance to undergo or to undertake your field sobriety test. Correct. That would be correct, but I don't know if I'd be search what I'm searching for. I don't remember. Help me understand what what do you mean you don't know what you're searching for? In the video. You don't recall searching the car? I don't. Okay, that's fair. I can back it up a little bit so you can have a chance to see what's happening. Stephanie. I got it yes. Question for you. Can I search your car? Yes. I just asked the vehicle doctor to test what's going on. I said, the car's on, right. so. Okay. Uh, what are you looking for? Oh. Okay, so it sounds as though you asked for voluntary consent is essentially why you searched. That's correct. And then had you found anything, you probably would have documented, or would you like to watch the search just to verify? If I found anything, I would have documented. Okay. So you and I believe one of your, um, the, 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 the officers that work with you were, were um, performed a search. I think I'm going to draw our blood pressure. Okay, and at some point, did you make a determination that you were going to draw her blood? Yeah, after the field sobriety. Well, what was what was your comment? Was that you, you commenting here? I think I'm going to draw her blood. Yep. Okay. But I still hadn't made up my mind to place her in custody. Okay. But you said, I think I'm going to draw her blood. Correct. Would you need to place her in custody for that? Yes. Okay. So that you're concluding the search here. So at the point that we're at with the video, you've had the opportunity to interact with her and determine that she's got slurred speech, correct? Yes. And then you've had the opportunity to observe her, her pupils for about a half a second closed and then opened and they, to your, to your testimony, did not react. Correct. And then there was the accident. Correct. And the prior um, driving. Correct. And that was when you made the determination that you were going to draw her blood. In her admittance that she had taken meds or does take meds, then she didn't take meds. Um, just the overall total circumstance. Okay. See, tennis has just played a whole video of the I simulate that time. Gets you um, fifteen minutes, but when I try to enter, when I try to maneuver it, it freezes. So I, just to play, so I, to... I think I'm gonna draw our blood. I think it'd be a good idea. Especially with the previous call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Like I said, she does have a payment plan for something for Sawyer. 2021. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he didn't do the safety and stuff. So. So when was he eligible? Well, yeah, but he didn't get it back. He was reinstated June 4th. Last year. Yeah. Well, hey, you want me to cut him a ticket? Then you can take him be booked in release. I'm going to draw over. I'm taking her for both. She's slur. So I just stopped at 15 minutes. Next part I'm going to switch to is the disc that's um, 1047 is the time on it. So he's on his way. Okay. Have, um, your... So at that point, you've um, essentially made the determination that you're going to, to draw her blood. It, it, it appears, correct? I'm just trying to remember because it appears, I don't know if your videos are in order. Um, well, I thought the time would be, it, um, like the one was 9.42 and this one's 10.47. He, you're asking about him being on his way. But that time frame doesn't match up with the time that the incident happened. Correct. But I think that the, the I, I guess you, you're the one that was there. So you, you can tell me. It sounds as though now, at first, the, the paramedics and the fire department were there. I believe they're gone at this point when we play the video. And um, you're seeing now Miss Current kind of packing things up and you're talking about leaving. Correct, but I just don't know if what the videos you're showing are in order is all I'm saying. Fair enough. So I guess you tell me, is this after um, what we just, is, we'll play a little bit so that you can see it. How about that? Yeah, I'm going to remember I asked you if you wanted to perform field sobriety tests. Yes. Here, I'll just give you a card. Okay. Oh my God, no. All right, well, we can worry about that later. Here's my card. I'll put it in this bag. Thank you. It'll all go with Tim. So, being as he had the back, so how long ago did you have back surgery? February was my second surgery. So, this last February, like three, four months ago? Uh, February 14th, and I had fusion, and um, they had put lots of kids. I had no okay. degenerative yes, disease. disease, and they did my whole spine with lots of pain. Okay. Did they, were you prescribed medications at that point? Every surgery I was, and then I stopped doing them. How long ago? They had a surgery in February. March and quick. Okay. Take any other here's where any other prescription meds. Every now and again, maybe once every other month, the pain is too unbearable to do doing the exercise and I will ask for a prescription to give it off. They give me thirty. Okay. And then they last me two months. Okay. When's the last time you took a tram at all? I don't believe in that because it just copies yep. it's for fake. Yep. I hear um, you. It's not real. Yep. So I'm going to have you face this way for me. Put your cigarette out or down. I'm not going to, I'm just going to have you stand there. All right. And I need you to take your glasses off. Now at this point, are you able to better see that perhaps now we're after the emergency vehicles have left? It does appear the fire department that is are gone. Okay. So can we agree perhaps then that this is sequentially after. what I showed you was first and, yep. and there was something in the middle and then this is second? Correct. Okay. Um, in terms of the field sobriety test or the standardized field sobriety test, you've uh, already articulated your um, basis for not um, doing the stand and turn, the or I'm sorry, walk and turn, and the one leg stand. And so that was um, prior testimony, correct? Correct. All right. Now, um, the, the horizontal gaze nystagmus, uh, there's a, a standardized checklist that is used across all law enforcement agencies. Is that fair to say? Correct. And the basis for doing these tests in a standardized manner is to ensure that everyone who's taking the test has the same or similar result. Correct. All right. And so the first test that you would perform under the horizontal gaze nystagmus is the lack of smooth pursuit. Is that correct? Yes. And that is approximately two seconds out and two seconds back. Is that the right amount of timing? That'd be pretty accurate. Yes. Okay. Um, 
And you're checking each eye independently. Correct. And you would um, look for what's called a clue. Correct. And so one of the things that you're looking for is smooth pursuit. Yes. All right. And approximately two seconds out, two seconds back, we've already covered that. And then the second clue that you're going to be looking for is distinct and sustained nystagmus. Is that fair to say? When I went through the class, it was just distinct nystagmus at maximum deviation. Okay. And so that one, you, you hold your finger approximately 12 to 15 inches away. From the nose. Yes. Or from the subject or the, the, from the subject. Yes. And then um, you hold the stimulus steady for a minimum of four seconds. Correct. And then you move the stimulus back across the subject's face all the way to the left side. Correct. And that's going to be another minimum of four seconds. The four seconds, what they're talking about is when you're outside at the maximum deviation. You want to leave it there for that long. Correct. Okay. And then at that point, you're looking for jerking. Is that correct? Jerkiness, the involuntary movement of the eyes. Okay, perfect. And then onset of nystagmus, is that one of the tests that you're familiar with or is, is it called something else when you- When I went through it, it was nystagmus prior to the onset. Okay, prior to the onset, prior to 45 degrees. Does that sound like another way to say it? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to trick Probably, you. I, prior, I would say nystagmus prior to the onset, yeah, prior to the onset of 45 degrees. Okay, and again, you're looking for that 12 to 15 inches. Ideally, you want to stay away from the subject's face. Yes, 12 to 15 inches on each pass part of the nystagmus test. Okay, and that one, um, the eyes may begin jerking almost immediately if someone's got a very high high BAC, is that fair to say? Yes. And then for someone with a lower BAC, it may not start until the eyes move to nearly the 45 degree angle. Correct. And that one is um, a controlled and smooth pursuit? Yes. Okay. And why are the four second um, pauses or the four second counts um, important? It gives the subjects, well, us time to observe the subject's eyes. Okay, does it also- At, max, at, ma at the maximum deviation. Because a lot of times as we're out holding, the subject's eyes haven't even att attained your finger yet out at the maximum deviation. And then the eye needs, I, I suspect, some time to kind of complete its, its progression and also start to, to to take on the next cycle. And a lot of it's focus. Okay. And so at that point, do you recall that you did administer the um, the horizontal gaze nystagmus testing? Yes. Okay. Okay. You can just hang on to them or throw them in the bag. You see that my finger right here, ma'am. When I move my finger from side to side, follow with your eyes only. Okay. okay. You understand so far? All right. Once again, just follow the tip of my finger with your eyes only. Do not move your head. Okay. Your head's still for me. Okay, one more. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Right. So that was the, was that what 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 test did you just perform there? The horizontal gaze nystagmus. Um, was that the smooth pursuit? The one that we just saw. The last one. Well, your finger was going back and forth. What was happening there? So the first the first two passes. You're looking for equal tracking, equal pupil size in both okay. the subject's eyes. On top of that, you're also looking for the lack of smooth pursuit. Okay, and those are about two seconds out and two seconds back. Correct. All right. And the, then the next set of passes your is the onset or nystagmus. Onset of nystagmus. nystagmus at maximum deviation. Okay, and that's the one where you're supposed to pause for four seconds. Correct. And did that occur here? I probably didn't hold it for four seconds. Okay. And so it looks like now you're going to start going up and down. Is that the last one? It's just a quick vertical check. Okay. And the vertical nystagmus again is a hold for more, a maximum of, or uh, I'm sorry, a hold for a minimum of four seconds. I believe so. Okay. I see that. Uh, okay. Okay. And so she just mentioned to you, she also had her contacts in. Did, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. And so is that one of the questions that you're supposed to ask? Yep. And is it something that, what, what did they tell you if you encounter someone who has contacts in? You can ask it, but it should not affect the test. Okay, so you believe that, or you were never trained that it would impair or change the outcome? Not that I can remember.
And then you went on to um, do the counting test. Correct. And that's an alternate test that you are able to administer. Correct. And then she missed the number 45 on that. 44. I'm sorry, 44. And then you also did the alphabet and that one was no clues. Correct. Okay. So in your testimony, the, the, of the test that you gave, she failed the nystagmus six out of six, and then also missed one clue on the counting. The one clue on the counting is enough for not, them not to be considered a pass. Oh, yes. That, uh, yes. So she missed one thing on the counting. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Oh, redirect Mr. Schmidt. Just a little bit. Um, so when you're counting the clues on the HGN, do you only see them at the end of the four seconds or when people have it, you sometimes seen it sooner? You can see it sooner. Okay. No further questions. Any uh, recross off of that question? Not off that question. All right. Thank you. You may step down. Thank you. Thank you. Any further witnesses, Mr. Schmidt? Um, I don't. Any witnesses, Ms. Erdman? No, you're not. All right, Mr. Schmidt, argument. Um, Ms. Erdman should uh, admit that flash drive into evidence. Oh, yeah, she should do that. Am I able to get this or do you want me to? I don't have any. Okay. And then it, it's got a lot more video on it than we played. She only played portions from the first two video files, right? Um, it was the, no, the numbers were 942 and 1047. So that was the time that associated with the two that we played. Okay. Okay. Um, well, when I watched what was presented by the defense, I thought the same thing as I thought when I read the motion. It missed the trees before the forest. It was a red herring argument. So I'm going to start first by just reading a, a summary of what the law of probable cause to arrest is. This is from State v. Kennedy, Supreme Court Wisconsin case, 2014 WI 132. Kennedy argues that the physical indications of intoxication observed by officers, uh, bloodshot, glassy eyes, slurred speech, swaying, and the odor of alcohol in his breath were insufficient to establish probable cause to believe Kennedy probably committed a drunk driving uh, related oh. violation or crime. He makes this argument based on the understanding that field sobriety tests are a prerequisite to finding probable cause. Kennedy's understanding is mistaken. Wisconsin has no requirement that police must perform field sobriety tests in order to determine whether probable cause exists that a person is operating under the influence of alcohol. Probable cause exists where the totality of the circumstances within the arresting officer's knowledge at the time of the arrest would lead a reasonable police officer to believe that the defendant probably committed a crime. Further, it is not necessary that the evidence giving rise to such probable cause be sufficient to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, nor must it be sufficient to prove that guilt is more probable than not. In the context of an arrest for a drunk driving related violation or crime, law enforcement officer may consider numerous factors in order to determine probable cause to arrest. Probable cause may be established through showing of erratic driving and subsequent stumbling of the driver getting out of the motor vehicle. In other cases, factors sufficient to support a finding of probable cause have included bloodshot eyes and odor of intoxicants, slurred speech, together with a motor vehicle accident or erratic driving. Uh, probable cause is a flexible, common sense measure of the plausibility of particular conclusions about human behavior. This is uh, paragraphs 21 through 22 of that decision. Uh, what the court heard is in broad daylight, clear weather, um, a straight road, uh, Officer Tex at the time, now Chief Tex, was called out to a two-vehicle crash. When he got there, he saw Stephanie Current. His hackles were raised because Stephanie Current was just stopped 20 minutes ago by Stephanie Wadeen, another police officer for erratic driving. He did a flashlight test where her eyes did not react appropriately to the light. The court even heard him say to another officer, to Chief uh, Cybers at the time, I don't think it's alcohol. He was thinking it was a drug driving. That's why he asked a bunch of drug questions to the defendant. The defendant spoke with a weird kind of slurred accent. Do we still have her? Yes. Okay. I just just making sure. Not looking to get her back. He then performed the horizontal gaze and stagmus test, the test he testified, even though it detects alcohol. Uh, it also sometimes detects some drugs and sometimes not others. Uh, she did not succeed on that test. He saw the nystagmus. He saw the jerkiness of the eyes. The jerkiness of the eyes is the indicator. He asked her to count backwards a few numbers, a person with five years of college education, she was unable to do so. She missed a number, didn't realize she missed a number and laughed an inappropriate affect to that situation. He also talked with uh, the driver of the other vehicle who said that, who confirmed that uh, Stephanie Current was driving erratically. She was weaving back and forth. She was alternating her speed and she stopped without a blinker. And that's what caused a crash. All of these things together were sufficient probable cause to arrest Stephanie Current. Quite frankly, if he never did the HGN at all, he still had probable cause to arrest Stephanie Current with all of that. We have bad driving on clear roads in broad daylight with erratic driving, and the number test, I think, is probably probable cause all on its own based upon what the standard is. So for those reasons, I would ask the court to find that there is probable cause. I don't even think the court has to get to 
back and forth arguments about the HGN because if it decided on the narrowest grounds, it could find even without that probable causes met. I know that there's been nothing presented by the defense that the way that the officer deviated from performance of the HGN, not holding it for exactly four seconds, could cause the test to be inaccurate. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Erdman. Your Honor, um, I think that the most, um, the, the obvious is that the there was no order of intoxicants mentioned in any reports. The intoxometer was triggered at the time that she was on the scene and it came up as negative. So I, it, the suspicion was that there was some type of um, illicit substance that was uh, attributable to this. When the prior stop was effectuated, the officer did not suspect anything in terms of impairment. She did not conduct field sobriety tests and she did release her without giving her any type of a, a ticket. With the current um, incident, we have a vehicle following behind her, an unlicensed driver that rear-ended the vehicle that Stephanie was in as Stephanie was um, slowing to turn into the beach area with her granddaughter in the car. They were going swimming. Uh, with the testimony of the individual who was driving, we didn't necessarily hear that there was poor driving per se, other than he just stated he didn't, didn't see a blinker. Um, with the daylight that was present, right? It, it was that time of the day when, when brightness can be impacted. And when we look at brightness, her eyes, when he deemed them non-reactive, they literally were closed for about a half a second or less in terms of the um, test to determine whether or not the, the eyes were reactive in broad daylight without any opportunity to adjust to begin with. With respect to the search of the vehicle, there was nothing illicit or illegal located. Um, the, the testimony that her speech was slurred, Your Honor had the opportunity to hear Ms. Um, Current speak for a number of, or a, a period of time. Um, the, the officer's report in the complaint also indicates that um, she had a hard time keeping steady on her feet, but I think he's now indicated today that that wasn't the case. Um, we were able to see her walk about in a number of the videos, and I would have focused more on that had, had that um, been his testimony, but he, he acknowledged that she was not unsteady on her feet. And so the HGN, um, the reason that it's standardized is that it needs to be performed as instructed. There's a four second um, pause to now allow the eye to essentially do what it's going to do. So it says minimum of four seconds, it's a standardized test. And, and it was pretty clear that that was not being adhered to. Given the total of the circumstances, there was an accident that the unlicensed driver attributed to Ms. Current. Ms. Current did not have the same version and that is obviously something for another day. But her, her presentation that day, Your Honor, did not rise to the level of someone who's got anything other than the affirm, affirmities of aging. In other words, she was showing or demonstrating someone who's got dentures in her teeth and her behaviors that day were fully appropriate. She was answering questions appropriately. She um, was not in any way um, attempting to uh, you know, leave. She was responding appropriately. So for those reasons, Your Honor, we don't believe that there was any reason to place her under arrest. Oh, the last thing I was gonna point out is that the determination to draw her blood was made very early on in the stop, um, even prior to observing things like the field sobriety test. And I do acknowledge that standardized field sobriety testing is not even required. It's just one of the tools that the officer can rely upon in order to make a full and overall assessment. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anything last before I do a decision? I just add that the decision of when to do the blood draws are relevant to the court's analysis for probable cause. That's all. All right, thank you. Well, this was a very lengthy hearing. Um, a lot of it, or some of it, had to do with uh, technicalities um, from um, getting the video to play. We were able to get the video to play, um, and therefore the court was able to observe and watch the video. I heard the testimony of the officer here who did testify that he's an experienced officer and has been qualified um, and ex has the training and the experience to perform um, all of the necessary tests and to make determinations as it relates to intoxicated or under the influence um, driving. Um, here, the officer testified that uh, he, he was at the scene of a two vehicle crash in which he did have the opportunity to meet with and discuss uh, the matter with uh, Ms. Current. Um, uh, prior to, the officer had knowledge that prior to this crash that Ms. Current um, did uh, was stopped by another officer um, due to other uh, erratic driving uh, prior to this approximately 20 or so minutes uh, previously. During the uh, 
questioning or um, discussion with Ms. Current. Ms. Current did uh, go over the fact that she suffered from a back injury and she had been prescribed medications here and there. She at first said that she didn't take any medications and then uh, she made statements that uh, she did take some medications at some times. Um, the officer uh, did observe um, from the get-go slurred speech uh, from Ms. Current. It could be um, something as simple as dentures or it could be driving under the influence of an intoxicant. Um, the officer also did testify that uh, when he performed um, the test with his, his flashlight to look at the pupils, the pupils did not react to any light, uh, the pupils did not react or, to con or constrict. The officer testified that uh, medications can affect how the pupils react, normal pupils close and open and constrict uh, when light is uh, placed upon the pupils. Um, when the pupils are under um, the influence of intoxication or some types of medications, um, the pupils would react di differently. They could be pinpointed, they could be dialed, they could be supersized, they, or they could stay the same. When the officer performed the horizontal gaze nystagmus test, he did observe six out of six cues. Um, he did so um, doing the outside and the inside um, shoulder test with regards to that. And at both of those tests, he did observe jerkiness of the eyes. He didn't perform any walk and turns or any uh, or the standing uh, test due to the back injury and not wanting her to uh, be further injured or to fall down. He did perform other tests uh, such as the alphabet test and the uh, numbers test of counting backwards. Um, and. Uh, Ms. Current testified that she is well educated. She has five years of college and she was not able to uh, correctly do the test uh, with the numbers going down uh, from the numbers. Um, she missed uh, number 44. She was able to do the alphabet uh, test with no uh, clues and did pass that. <coughs> the officer did testify that uh, during his discussion with uh, Ms. Current that um, he did have the initial uh, erratic driving complaint and the slurred speech, um, which did give rise or suspicion as to um, operating while under the influence of an intoxicant. Um, the court has to look at probable cause and whether or not there's enough probable cause for an arrest in the matter. Um, probable cause is not a very high standard when the court um, looks at whether there's enough to even uh, perform field sobriety tests or whether there's enough for an arrest. Um, I believe based upon the testimony here and the fact that there was this was a, a clear and sunny day, there was no issues with weather, this was a straight road, um, there was reports of erratic driving, um, Ms. Uh, Current's eyes did not react with the um, light test, the flashlight test, um, and the fact that uh, this, she was involved in um, a traffic accident. It is a red herring uh, argument to say that the individual that hit her what, did not have a valid driver's license. Um, uh, the fact that there is an accident at all and all of these other cues go in favor of the fact that there is probable cause here, uh, probable cause to um, undergo field sobriety test, probable cause to arrest, probable cause to uh, request and obtain a blood draw. Um, and the court does note that it is using the standard under uh, State v. Kennedy, as cited by the, the state of Wisconsin and the DA's office uh, for this, which does go into very thoroughly what probable cause uh, is and what does support probable cause uh, to suspect that the individual is operating while under the influence. Um, again, she did testify um, as to the multiple um, back surgeries and needing, and most recently from the February back surgery and getting uh, prescriptions um, when she needs them for pain every other month or so, and it lasts approximately two months uh, when she uh, does take those medications. Again, I think it's another red herring um, argument that the officer didn't hold the the position for four seconds. The officer testified that in his training and experience that uh, you can recognize uh, whether or not the pupils are reacting and are reacting appropriately um, shortly into uh, performing the test and four seconds is not something that is necessary to um, stay in order to view that there are cues or a lack of cues. Therefore, the court does find that there is probable cause and I'm going to deny the motion to suppress. We need to set this matter for another um, 
date and time, perhaps a status, or what are you thinking, Ms. Birdman? Judge, I do need to check in with Ms. Current, so I think a status is appropriate. And you are completely booked the week of July 29th. Judge, um, I, today's scheduled to be in trials the 30th forward. I do have an hour from one until two on the 29th. Um, and that is when I am in a prison sentence. Although judge you, oh, did you give Mr. Lamb that new date? Cause I was scheduled to be with Mr. Lamb at 10 on the 29th. Did he keep that date? He did not keep that date. I did move him on that date. So I could do 10 on uh, July 29th. Okay. 10 on July 29th. Yes. Thank you. 10 o'clock on July 29th, we can have a status. Can I have a minute with my attorney? Um, I don't have time to let you have a breakout session with your attorney at this time. It is now 515. I have to release my staff. That means I have to shut down my system. Um, you can give your attorney a call or she can give you a call while you're at the jail and you can discuss this matter further and where you would like to go uh, with this case.